He's back, fifty. Always waiting for him to come in, yeah. Okay. Oh, come 
Okay, we light these candles as a sign of the coming light of Christ. In the wilderness, prepare the way of our Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The Lord will give you a sign. A young woman is with child and shall bear a son. You shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall be level, and the rough places plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Flocks were sleeping, shepherds keeping vigil till the morning dew. Saw the glory, heard the story, tidings of a gospel true. Thus rejoicing, free from sorrow, praise his voicing, greet the morrow, Christ the baby. Born for you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning. It's almost Christmas, and welcome to worship on the fourth Sunday of Advent here at St. Andrews. If you are joining us online, I invite you to light candles for if you have them remembering that God is with you right where you are. If you are with us in the sanctuary, I invite you to take the friendship registers, sign them, pass them down. And if you have any prayer that's on your heart today, please take one of the yellow prayer cards, fill that out, and the ushers will bring those forward for you during our first song. All right, so tonight, children, youth, and the young at heart are invited to come down in Snyder Hall from four to six for some Christmas movies and Coco. Any preview? Do we know what we're watching? Okay, I don't know what the classics mean, but the classics. <laughs> Whatever Rob thinks the classics are. Also, as we go towards Christmas weekend, please do note the service times, Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock and Christmas Day on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. I hope you can come and join us for worship on these holy days. This morning, Robin Grice is going to share with us about the Christmas Joy Offering. Uh, today we, we will be receiving the Christmas Joy Offering. Envelopes are in the uh, Friendship Register, so as you pass them, if you take a purple envelope, that's where your Christmas Joy Offering um, money will be received. Um, the Christmas Joy Offering is one of the four special offerings that is taken by PCUSA, and this one is divided in, in half. 50% of the gifts assist current and retired church workers and their families with critical financial needs. And the other half um, goes to Presbyterian-related schools and colleges equipping communities of color. So it helps young people advance um, that might not get that opportunity. There is a brochure in the back where the bulletins were if you'd like to pick one up and read about it. Um, but again, the offering envelopes are in the friendship registers. There are other ways to give, and they are listed on the back of the brochure. So you can do things like giving through the congregation here, sending it into the church office. You can also donate online, and you can text. And there is a uh, little code there at the bottom if you can use your smartphone to do that as well. So we, we hope that you will give to the Christmas Joy Offering, the last one of this year. Thank you. Let us lift our hearts up to God. Holy God, we turn to you in the midst of this morning. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would draw near to us and draw us nearer and nearer to you. 
Oh Lord, use this service that you would be glorified, that you would speak to our souls right where we are in this day. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let's stand together and join in the song, Glory, Let There Be Peace. star burns in the darkness, shines with the promise, Emmanuel. One child born in the stillness, living within us, Emmanuel. We're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace, let there be peace, singing glory, glory, let there be peace, let it start in me. One voice speaks for the voiceless, hope for the hopeless, Emmanuel. Brings us together now and forever, Emmanuel. We're singing glory, glory. Let there be peace, let there be peace. Singing glory, glory. Let there let it start in me. Do not be afraid. His love is strong enough to save us. Nothing stands in the way. His love is strong enough to lead us. there be peace singing glory glory let there be peace let it start in me singing glory glory let there be peace let there be peace singing glory Glory, let there be peace, let it start in me, let there be peace, let it start in me. We can come to God's glory because we trust in his love and mercy. So let us come and offer together this prayer of confession. Pray with me. Holy God, in your presence we confess our failings and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we wandered from your ways, wasted your gifts, and ignored your presence and your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Forgive our sins and help us to accept your presence, accept your gifts, and live in your light. The 
The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ came for us. So people of God today know the grace and the love and the forgiveness of God that are for you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pass the peace to one another.
The kids are welcome to come forward. football game's a little later, so hang on. Good morning, guys. So first and foremost, wow, you guys did really good with the bells and the singing, so thank you. That was awesome. But I'd love to say I did an amazing job, but that was for you guys. All right, what happens in one week? Christmas. Are you guys excited? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Are you going to be thinking about Christmas all week? Yes. Great, because you know what? We've been getting our manger together, haven't we? Where is everybody? They're traveling. Nobody's here yet, right? Yeah, we have a cow in our manger. And one thing that's coming out later. All right, so do you think this week maybe some things should arrive in our manger? Who do you think should be here this week? Mary and Joseph. So where are Mary and Joseph? Oh, hey, look at that. They got closer this week. Would you guys like to get Mary and Joseph and bring them over? We forgot Mary. Donkey Kong. All right. So let's go ahead and get Mary and Joseph in our nativity. Go ahead, put them in. All right. So Mary and Joseph are here, but we still have our shepherds out in the field. How are, how are they going to find out what's happening? The angel. The angel. And we sing songs about angels. Angels we have heard on high. No? All right. So the angel has to go out into the world and tell our shepherds, our wise men are already falling with star, but they have to start sharing what is the news that is about to happen this week, right? Okay, so would you guys like to take the angel over to the shepherds? Grace, you want to go do that? Go ahead and take the angel over to our shepherds. Shepherds are over there shepherding us in music. And while she's doing that, Here's the last bit as we're going into this final week to remember. You know this excitement that you feel about Christmas? It's right around the corner. You're going to wake up. You're going to open presents. You're going to have time with your family. You're going to have a moment that is just wonderful. This is the joy that we're invited to share. This is the joy that the angels are sharing with the shepherds that Christ is for everyone born to us. So this week, as you're looking and you're excited at school going, Christmas is here, I don't have to deal with my teachers for a week. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to be excited about what is our reason for the season and to share that joy as well. So look for the joy that is Christ that we can share in the week as we're looking towards Christmas. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for how you gather us all together around your manger. I ask that in this week we would find not only the joy and anticipation of Christmas and the break that is to come, but we would find the joy that is Christ born to us and share that into this world. I praise you and thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. On this absolutely beautiful Sunday morning, if you would indulge me for a minute, I would just like to say that I am so grateful for Maggie, 
and Rob and Robin and all of the great things that are happening with the church. So thank you for indulging me. And now, let's join together in the prayer for illumination. I can't find it. I know it's here. No, that's all right. I got it. No, I don't have it. Yeah, it's not up here. Okay, now I've got it. So join with me, please. Lord Jesus Christ, source of all light, by your word, give light to our lives. So the first reading this morning is from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. If you are at home, I invite you to open your Bible. If you are here, there's Bibles in the pew racks as well. Let us listen for God's word that is for us in this day. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, I have been thinking about my great-grandfather. He had a different name, but everyone called him Curly. And he was tall, and he was kind, and he'd been a principal at a big high school in California. And after he was gone, I heard stories of how he knew every student's name, often catching them by surprise in the grocery store with a hi, Billy, or a hello, Jenny, as he calmly walked by. Now, my memories of him were not conversations. I actually don't remember a single conversation I had with him, but I remember him sitting in his chair, delighting as Grandma Ruby told a wonderful story, or having a huge smile as he welcomed me onto his lap, or how he gave even his great-grandchildren rides pulling us on his bicycle. So he was that quiet and strong presence but he was also that one you could say anything to, and you knew your words were safe. They would never end up anywhere else. The words wouldn't be judged, but his response would be one of love and wisdom. And as I've grown older, I've learned more and more how that's true. As I've gotten to the age where you get to hear those stories they don't tell you as children, you know what I mean? The kind that let you know that you're ever in serious trouble, you want someone like Grandpa Curly to call. You all have someone you can call if you're in serious trouble, right? You know who that is. It was this kind of presence that came to mind because I was reading more and more about Joseph, that quiet one behind the manger. Because today the Gospel of Matthew points us to the Christmas miracle from a different perspective. It's from Joseph's perspective. Now Joseph's first hearing of the news was certainly one of mixed emotions. We don't hear who or how the news was broken, but Joseph is told that his fiance is pregnant and the child isn't his. What we do hear is what he decides to do. Unwilling to make a big scene or cause Mary any more pain or shame, he quietly decides to just end their engagement. And then he has a dream. Do you remember those stories you read in Luke, how Zechariah got this big angel in the inner sanctuary and Mary had an angel come to her? Remember those? Yes? Yes. Okay, good. If not, they're in Luke, chapter 1. It's a great chapter. In Matthew... Joseph doesn't get an angel right in the midst of him while he's awake. The angel comes in a dream. How are you all at being good with your dreams? Seems a little fuzzier, doesn't it? So here in the midst of his dream, the angel comes, and it tells him not to be afraid to stay with Mary. He hears that this is still the right thing to do, 
that she'll have a child conceived by the Holy Spirit, and Joseph will get to name him Jesus. We don't hear questions like we heard in Luke chapter 1. He doesn't make any dramatic speeches. In fact, scripture doesn't record a single word that Joseph says. Instead, what we hear is what he does. His actions do all the talking. He follows the word given to him by the angel, even though it's in a dream. He stays with Mary. He names the baby Jesus. And he cares for them, protects them, and loves them. In Joseph, we find the most gracious and wonderful response to God's word and God's miracle, one of acceptance. As he comes alongside, as he acts to support and celebrate this miracle of God that's right in the midst of his life. So who thinks that this was easy? All right, nothing in scripture says all of this was easy. Yet, Joseph participates faithfully without hesitating in this messy, awesome miracle that reshapes his role in life. I want to share with you for a moment some of what Wendy Weems writes as she shares about Joseph in the midst of this season. As you hear this, I invite you to think of people in your life who have done these type of things or that you know are the kind of people who would do this. When the wonder and majesty of the season seem submerged in the hollow and pain-filled realities of everyday life, I like to think of Joseph, not as the idealized patriarch of the Holy Family, but as the overlooked figure standing in the shadows of the Advent and Christmas story. It is precisely that shadowy Joseph who appeals to me at this particular point in the season. Joseph represents for me the hidden, loving involvement in family that is neither obviously rewarding nor visible. Joseph is the innumerable sleepless nights tending a sick child, waiting up for a teen out on the date, or worrying about placement of a failing parent in a rest home. Joseph is taking in your sister and her kids as they suffer through a divorce. Joseph is the thousand of tiny moments of broken trust that get healed in a hug or an I'm really sorry. Joseph is balancing the budget one more time, clipping out coupons, and reheating or disguising the leftovers into one more casserole surprise. Okay, who's good at that? Someone is. Joseph is shouldering college tuition costs or giving Saturdays to coach the softball team. Joseph is all the endless loving gestures of encouragement. I want to affirm Joseph's hidden life, for it is against this backdrop of stability and unfaltering care that the miracle of the divine birth is given a place to grow and mature in our families, a place to grow and mature in our families. Not only the miracle of Christ, but the life of faith that abides in the midst of it all. Joseph shows us love and faith lived together. He shows us what it means to be there for another, to come alongside To not choose to be the one in the spotlight, but yet the one that makes life a little easier for all of those around them. Advent points us to the miracle of God come to be with us. We see such a variety of responses to this good news, and Joseph shows us a steady love and a faithful acceptance. I think it would have been easy in lots of ways for Joseph to turn against this development in his life, but he doesn't. Instead of making it all about him, he makes it all about God. And so Joseph invites us to be faithful and to be there, to be ready to take on whatever comes next, whether it's unexpected news or a child sent from God whether it's wise men showing up with strange gifts 
or even persistent threats from Herod. Joseph doesn't sing a prophetic song. He doesn't ask questions. He doesn't ask for anything. He obeys God and follows the direction of the angel. He accepts the miracle, and so he gets to spend the rest of his days walking and living with Jesus, who's God revealed to us in every stage of life. It's Joseph's actions that speak and that call us into a way of life that lives into God's miracles. He shows us how to be there right in the midst of it all without missing a single, messy, glorious moment. Life is messy, isn't it? Amazingly, scripture shows us that even miracles are messy. So where will we be found? In this Christmas, let us remember Joseph and let our actions lean towards his steadfast love and faithful actions and watch the miracles of life unfold all around us. God is with us always. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Join me as we read the Advent litany, litany responsibly, please. O root of Jesse, rising as a sign for all the peoples, before you earthly rulers will keep silent and natures give you honor. Come quickly to deliver us. Come, Lord Jesus. O Emmanuel, our sovereign and lawgiver, desire of the nations and savior of all, come and save us, O Lord our God. Come, Lord Jesus. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Hallelujah forevermore. There are is, there are a variety of ways to give to the church. I direct your attention to the back of the bulletin. They're all listed back there. I encourage you to read it and choose your way to support the church. <clears throat> and now join with me with a prayer of dedication as we return our blessings to the Lord. What can, what I, can give I give him? him poor as I, I am. am. If, if I were, I were a shepherd, shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If, if I were a wise man, man I, would I would do my part. part. Yet what, what can I can give him? I give, I give him, him my give heart. Him my heart.
Let us come to God with all our prayers. Holy God, you know how far our lives are from perfect. And yet, O oh Lord, as we draw closer and closer to Christmas, we remember that you come into this world and live right in the midst of all the mess and all the grief and all the pain to abide with us and to bring your love and your peace and your joy and your hope. And so today, O oh Lord, we bring you our hearts and we bring you our prayers. May they pour out before you. We lift up to you, O oh Lord, those who are ill, who are in the midst of fighting infections or viruses or so many things that are going around. Hear our pray th prayer this day for Bill and for Jeff. We ask, O oh Lord, for your healing, for your help. We pray, O oh Lord, as in the midst of the season, we pray for those who are in a season of grief or even a new wave of grief. We lift up to you the Regester family as they face another wave as Bob's brother Ken has passed away. We pray, O oh Lord, for your peace that passes all understanding to surround them. We pray, O oh Lord, for your love and your comfort to come in again and again. And, O oh Lord, we ask that you be with joy. Our dear sister who's had a fall and her leg is broken, we ask, O oh Lord, body, mind, and soul, that you draw near to her, that you uphold her, that you help with the healing, that it would be even smoother than hoped for. O oh Lord, we ask that you hear all the prayers that we offer. Take them up, O oh Lord. Help us in the midst of our messy lives that we too would see your presence and glimpse the miracle of your work all around us. Today we join our hearts and our prayers with the words that are always right, the words that Jesus came and gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
we go out, you're invited to join us for fellowship in the gathering area. Today and every day as you go out into this messy world, be a steady part of God's work in the midst of it all. Be a faithful presence to all of those around you. And may you too see glimpses of the miracle of God working right in the midst of this world. As you go, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abide in the love of Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.